Okay, so to create a local database connection in SQL Server Management Studio is quite straightforward, but there's a few little tricks to it. So let's have a look at that now and get straight into it. Now, if you open SQL Server Management Studio, why wow, such a mouthful, isn't it? But if you open it and it comes straight into here, if you see this, you can just press the options if you've got the long view just to see fewer options, keep it simple, right? Anything you've got in here, just delete that. And if you haven't already selected, choose Windows Authentication to then use your profile so you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. Now, in a moment, we're going to put something into here. But if I come over to my notepad, it's always handy to have a notepad open, right, for these things. We're going to use this command, okay, SQL local DB. And then you can see we've got a variety of them. Now, my project is like uh, Welsh verbs. I'm going to hopefully make a web app on it. If I ever get to it and I'm going to call the local database instance verb tables so I can just copy and paste that so literally SQL local DB space create open quotes name of your local database connection verb tables and then that will run now we're also going to you can use the info command as well to check it out see what's happening and then we can use the start command the stop is really if you want to delete something you're going to have to use the stop before you can delete it and the others we'll get to in a moment so let me open a command prompt window so i press windows key and type cmd and let's paste that in doesn't matter where it is okay because it always roots it to the same directory so perhaps let's put that to one side windows and right arrow if you're not sure of that one and while that's running you see it only takes a few seconds it actually then shows you the version number that's been created so what I can do just to see, let's get some info on it and let's see what it says. Okay, so it's got the name, version, blah, blah, blah. And its state is stopped. Okay, so the last start time, well, it was created time, but it wasn't actually started. So let's go and paste in our start command just to start that, get that up and running because you might have trouble connecting otherwise. And if I press up twice, then I can toggle through my history of commands. And you can see now the stopped up there has become running. So all is looking good. Now what you want to do also, you can have a look. If you put percentage local app data percentage, that just gets to at local app data around your username. It saves you putting that in. And then the Microsoft, Microsoft SQL Server, local DB backslash instances, which I'll put in the um, comments and a in the description but if you press windows r to open the run tool or you can just search for run in windows paste that in and it will open it in file explorer in windows and there you go you can see the instance this is where it stores all that data we don't need any more from that for now but it's just useful to have that context and if you were to delete it i got a video on that because it's a bit tricky but you can delete it from there as well now if i minimize that and I say delete at this point just for if you messed up with the names or whatever. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is actually then in SQL Server Management Studio is connect to it. So let me copy and paste, right? It's open brackets, local DB, close brackets, backwards slash, and then put the name that you gave in command prop. This is why having it on the clipboard is nice. So you just know there's no typos. And again, I'll put these in the video description and in a comment and let's connect and there you go there you go that is how you create a local database connection and connect to it in sql server management studio okay, so let's continue on then let's actually just make a database right so we've already got this now if you're importing you can right click on the databases folder and import there you need a backpack file and you just press next and you locate the file on your computer pretty straightforward or from Windows Azure if if that's how you're doing it let me close that because that's not what I'm going to do I'm just going to simply go new database now I've got to kind of <laughs> think about the names because I've done a few takes in this video with some technical issues <laughs> so I've been doing a few of these so let me just not change anything right let's just keep it simple because we're creating a database I want it called verbs okay I had done that one let's say verb oh accidentally pressed it but whatever it's gone through and it's called verb fine 
So we've got our local database connection in SQL Server Management Studio and we're connected to it. We've got our local database now to create a table. Okay, so there's a couple of ways you can do that, right? If I open, there's nothing in tables. So I can go to new, right click new table. I could do it very simply here. Okay, now as an ID, I don't really want to allow nulls and let's just say verb. And uh, let's say n bar char, it is just basically text, okay? String, whatever you want to call it. And if I press enter, oops, sorry, press control and s rather, give that a name. Let's call it verbs in the plural. And I should see if I press the refresh button up here, yep, it's collapsed. I can see dbo.verbs. It prepends that database object, okay? Don't worry about the name change, that's fine. And there you go, I've got that table. Now, if you don't like that, right, what you can do, I can right click on this because what I want, I really want the ID to auto increment. I don't want to have to write the numbers in order, etc. I want it to just write them in, okay? So another way to do it is to actually script this out. So if I right click, I can delete that, okay? Now, might get, it's not always that straightforward if you've got you know a more complex database but from scratch we're fine okay and so another way to do that is to right click and just do a new query okay so what we can do is create table let's give our table a name we called it verbs didn't we now this to be honest is so easy if you get chat gpt or ai to write it for you right because it'll give you good ways of doing it that aren't that don't have flaws and just make it so simple now, if I want to do the ID auto increment, let me come back over to my notepad because I've got it here, right? So you can see, and again, I just asked the ChatGPT to do this for me because it just saves time. I don't have to think about it. What I want in this case is giving me a, now I don't want Varchar, I actually want it in Varchar, and I just want it 50 characters long. So, you see here, it's going to do the same as we had before, id int, but identity, this means then that it's going to be incrementing and it starts at one and increments by one. So you don't have to write the numbers in. It's a nice thing. It just keeps it simple. So let's copy that in. Let me just paste that over. And with SQL Server Management Studio, Okay, you can press F5 or you can press the execute button. So you can see there's no tables here now. Press execute and you should get the success message. If you've got an issue, hover over, it should show you. Or again, just use something like ChatGPT to help you out. So I can refresh up here and you see it collapses the tables and there is our verbs table again. Now, if I do right click, select top 1000 rows, I can see that it's currently empty so next up now after having created our verbs table and we've got our verbs database and our verbs table verb tables local database connection wow similar names getting confusing we want to populate it with some data right so again if you're just getting started ChatGPT, ai perplexity whatever you want to use is great for this so i can do this okay now let's do a script table, insert two. And if I do that, it's gonna give me the insert statements I can use, which is mm, a little bit confusing to be honest the way it does that. So let's go over to an AI tool and do a little bit more with that, right? Okay, I like perplexity as I said. All right, let's say, uh, let's paste that in. Okay. Just give me, oh, maybe I'll make it a bit more like 50, whatever. Now you could do this with names, you could do whatever you want. Okay, nicely done. So now I've got that, and again, it's generating the data, right? So the syntax isn't that difficult, but the data is just more of the pain. And let's just paste that over. Now I've got that. Now I have seen it do this before, where I might want the N apostrophe what that does is actually if you've got characters beyond the english alphabet then you can do that and in this case if i scroll down to the bottom press 
Alt and Shift, you can see you can do a multi-line select. I can just, oops, press N, and that's going to go in. So if you're using other language, that'll help. So I've got that. Let me try executing. Okay, 50 rows affected. Right click, select top 1000 rows, and there you go. You've got your database up and running with insertions. Now, this is just the row number, but it's kept the ID. We didn't have to write that, and it's done it properly. So there you go. That's a nice start on SQL Server Management Studio. If you want to see more, check out this video here. And for more on the channel, check out this video, and I'll see you there. Thank you for watching.